Thank you, Scott. Um, I think we are one minute past the hour, so we can um, first get started. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today um, for today's webinar, China's Pharmaceutical Patent Linkage System. We have um, two speakers today. Um, our speaker, guest speaker, Mr. Lu Yang, is a very experienced um, patent attorney in China, specialized in patent litigation and patent invalidation. He's currently with the Chinese law firm of Zhilin. Before he joined Zhilin, he was with um, China's patent office for many, many years. He was first with the medical and the biological product um, department, and then with the patent review board. And during his tenure at the Chinese patent office, he also participated in the drafting of the patent law and um, review guidance. Um, overall, very experienced um, patent attorney on today's um, subject. And I'll give a chance um, for my uh, colleague, uh, Scott McMurray, to introduce himself. Thanks, Jing. Thanks, Mr. Liu, for joining us. Uh, my name is Scott McMurray. I'm a PhD organic chemist, um, and I'm also a pharmaceutical patent attorney in the US. I uh, focus my practice on both patent litigations in the pharmaceutical and life sciences space and for uh, transactional mm -hmm. matters. We also do a lot of IP due diligence, uh, looking at um, portfolios and uh, uh, licenses and that kind of thing for pharmaceutical companies and acquisitions. Uh, today, we're going to have a great speaker. Uh, Mr. Liu is going to present to us um, the new China pharmaceutical patent linkage system. Uh, looking forward to uh, learning what we can from him, and I'll add a few comments on uh, comparisons to the U.S. system. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. So without further ado, uh, I will turn it over to Mr. Lu. He will speak in Chinese, and I'll help him translate. Luyang可以开始了。大家好,很荣幸能有机会跟大家介绍一下中国的药品专业链接制度。那么2020年中国专利法修改的时候 然后请求这个法院或者说国家知识产权局来裁定这个相关的药品是否会落入到这个相关专利的这样的一个保护范围中。so um, China's pharmaceutical linkage uh, system started in 2020 when the Chinese patent law was amended to add Article 76. The gist of Article 76 is that um, it provides when a um, applicant applies for drug marketing and um, review and approval, and there's a patent dispute, the patent owner can either um, file a lawsuit with people's court or um, request a administrative uh, decision by China's um, patent office, the China, the China National IP Administration. And the nature of the lawsuit or request for administrative decision would be asking the court or the agency to confirm the uh, drug subject to the application falls within the uh, scope of protection of the relevant patents. Mm. 那个从这个专利法修改的这条规定也可以看得出来，在中国有一个比较大的特点，就是说，呃，确认这个药品是不是落入专利的保护范围，呃，有两个可以有两种途径，一个呢是可以去法院起诉，另外一个呢是可以请
，那么那个国家药监局、知识产权局，还有这个最高人民法院，呃，先后出台了三个文件。那这三个文件也构成了中国的这个药品专利链接制度的整个框架。So um, after the amendment um, in the patent law, in July 2021, actually on July 4th and 5th, um, 2021, the State Food and Drug Administration, which is China's equivalent to FDA, the uh, Chinese Patent Office, and also the Chinese Supreme Court issued um, three documents, legal documents, forming the legal framework of China's um, patent linkage system. 然后那个呃，就是上个月，也就是二零二二年的四月份，那个呃，北京知识产权法院和那个国家知识产权局分别就他们的首批的呃涉及专利药品链接制度的这样的案件，呃，做出了判决。And then um in April this year, just last month, both um the Beijing IP Court and um the China uh Chinese Patent Agency issued um the first batches of their uh civil decisions under the new China Chinese patent linkage system. Okay, Xiaoyao. 它是在中国建立了一个叫《中国上市药品专利信息登记平台》，那么类似于美国的陈皮书。呃，这个药品上市许可持有人获得这个药品注册证书之后，三十天内是可以将自己与这个药品相关的专利登记在这个平台上。So um, China's patent linkage system is quite similar to that of the other countries. The first step is um, patent registration. The registration platform was um, maintained, established and maintained by the Chinese agency with jurisdiction over drug approvals. Um, that's the Chinese equivalent to FDA. And um, the regulation requires that the uh, drug marketing authorization holder uh, meaning the party holding the authorization authorization to market a drug has um, 30 days to register patents related to the drug on, on this platform. Okay, 还有一类是这个生物生物药，也就是大分子药。那么对于不同的药，在登平台里面可以登记的类型是不同的。呃，化学药可以登记的是这个化合物的专利，还有含有这个活性成分的药物组合物专利和医药用途专利。那么生物制品就是生物药，它可以登记的是含有这个活性成分的这个序列结构的专利，还有这个医药用途专利。Um, so there are several types of patent that can, that can be registered on the um, Chinese platform. And generally uh, under the Chinese system, um, pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical products or drugs are generally classified into three categories. The first category is chemical drugs, also called um, small molecule drugs. And, um, and also there's um, another category called Chinese medicine. And the last category is um, biological drugs. And um, the type of patents that can be registered for uh, each category of this um, uh, drug classification would differ depending on the category that the drug or medicine falls into. For chemical drugs, or called um, small molecule drugs, you can register patents related to compound or um, pharmaceutical compositions containing, containing the API or medical uses of the ad, uh, active ingredients. But um, the rule is different for biological drugs. For biological drugs or large molecule drugs, you can only register patents on the sequence of the API or medical uses of the API. 嗯，那个呃不允许呃有一些呃就是中间体代谢产物、基因型、制备方法还有检测方法这些专利是不允许登记在这个平台上的。There are certain types of patent that cannot be registered on this platform, including patents on intermediates, um, metabolites, um, critical form, crystal forms, preparation methods, and detection methods. 
。呃，这里需要说明的是，虽然说这个生物药，也就是大分子这个呃药物是可以登记在这个平台中，而且相关的这个仿制药企业也需要提提交声明。但是呢，这个生物生物药是不涉及到专利挑战制度的，也就是说，呃，就是，就是这个仿制药企业提交声明之后，呃，即使对方，即使这个原研药企去起诉了，呃，这个仿制药企，那么药监部门也不会停止它的审评过程，而是会继续完成整个的审评过程，没有等待期，也没有独占期，挑战成功之后也没有独占期。So uh, it's worth mentioning the rules for biological drugs are actually um, different. So you can, um, it is allowed to register biological drugs on the platform and uh, when the generic um, applicants applies for the approval for a biological drug, it needs to file a declaration that uh, will be discussed later. However, there, the patent challenge rules will also discuss later doesn't apply to biological drug. This means um, if there's a patent dispute regarding um, the generic version, the dispute itself will not um, grant the patentee a waiting period that will, uh, that will introduce you more detail. Uh, instead, the uh, marketing approval, the drug marketing approval agency will proceed with its uh, administrative review process. In addition, there's not going to be an exclusivity period, um, even if later on there's a successful challenge of the patent. So when the applicant for a chemical or small molecule generic drug drug submits an application for um drug market for a drug marketing authorization, it needs to compare its um products to the patent information registered on the platform and it needs to make a individual declaration as to each of the patents um, listed on the platform which relates to the um, generic version. Next,那个声明一共包括四种类型。呃，第一种类型就是说，呃，一类声明是说这个，呃，这个登记平台上是没有这个被仿制药的相关信息的。呃，相关的这个呃专利已经终止了，或者被宣告无效了，呃，或者说它已经获得了专利的这个许可。第三类声明就是说，实际上这个虽然有这个被仿制药的这个专利，但是这个仿制药申请人承诺是说，在这个专
那个国家药品审批机构就会在这个刚刚说的那个平台上，呃，向社会公开这个申请的信息和相关的声明。这需要注意的是，这个如果说仿制药企业的声明是嗯相关的药物没有落入专利权的保护范围，那么它的声明应该还要包括这个仿制药这个呃它的技术方案跟相关专利的这样的一个权利要求的对比表和相应的这个技术资料。So within ten working days uh, after the generic drug application is accepted, the um, national drug agency will um, publish the application information, including the declaration. And um, if the declaration is alpha type, uh, alleging that the generic version doesn't fall into the protection scope of the relevant patents, the um, applicant, the generic applicants, also needs to submit a comparison between its um, products and the um, claims of the patent registered on the Chinese platform. And um, in addition, it needs to um, submit um, technical documents related to the comparison analysis. 嗯，然后专利权人如果收到这个呃四类声明之后，对这个四类声明有异议的，那可以在这个四十五天之内向这个法院提起诉讼，或者向呃，这个呃，国家知识产权局请求这个行政裁决，然后一旦这个呃，这个法院呃立案接受这个诉讼，或者说这个国家知识产权局接受这个行政裁决的请求之后，那么这个药品监督管理局就会停止他的审查，呃呃，应该呃就会设置一个九个月的等待期，在这个等待期内，他的这个审评过程会终止。So after the um, patentee receives the um, application, the information about the application declaration, and um, if it believes that the generic, the generic generic version falls within the protection scope of its patents, it can either bring a lawsuit um, before the Chinese um, before the Beijing IP court or the Chinese um, patent agency within 14, uh, 45 days. And um, if a dispute is initiated within this period, meaning either the Beijing IP court initiated the case or the Chinese Patent Office accepts the administrative decision application, then uh, there will be a waiting period um, set forth, um, which is a nine, nine months uh, waiting period set forth um, for the application. Within this um, nine months waiting period, there will um, the uh, review process by the drug administrative administration agency will be suspended during this period. 呃，下下两张 PPT。那 PPT 得调一下，嗯，嗯，是这个吧？呃，我这看的可能有延时。嗯嗯嗯，然后那个就是那个呃，就是法院法院接受这个诉讼之后，或者说国家知识产权局接受这个行政裁决之后，那么后面的结果会有几种。第一种呢，就是法院或者说是国家知识产权局确认这个呃药品是落入到这个专利权的保护范围的，那么这个时候就会呃。这药监局那边，他就会把这个呃呃仿制药的申报呃终止，直到这个呃专利权届满为止。So there are several several out outcomes um that um can uh result from either a judicial challenge or a request for administrative um decision. And the first potential outcome, possible outcome, is that if either the court or the um, patent office confirms that the generic drug falls within the scope of protection of the relevant patent, then um, the uh, National Drug Administration will suspend the approval process for the generic version um, prior to the expiration of the relevant um, patent rights. Uh, 呃，如果说这个法院最后认定说这个药品没有落入专利权的保护范围，或者说这个专利在后续的这个呃无效程序中被被宣告无效了，那么这种情况下，这个呃呃仿制药的审审评就会继续进行。
then um, the second possible outcome is if it is confirmed by the court or administrative agency patent office that the generic version doesn't fall within the scope of protection of the relevant patent, or um, the patent is um, the, the patent is declared uh, invalid, and then um, the relevant generic drug application, the review process for that uh, will just continue. 嗯，还有一种情况就是，如果过了九个月的等待期，那个法院或者说是国家知识产权局仍然没有做出这个相应的裁决的话，那么这个时候它的这个仿制药的审评也会继续进行。So um then there's the third potential outcome, which is that um if the nine months waiting period has passed and and uh, neither the court nor the administrative agency patent office has issued a decision, then the approval register regulatory approval process, marketing approval process for the generic version will continue as well. 下面一张PPT，那个呃，如果说比如说在等待期之后，那个呃药店部门继续审评的过程中，这个时候收到了法院发来的关于这个呃药品落入到专利保护范围的这样的一个判决，或者说是行政裁决的话，那么这个时候这
Thanks, Jean. Thanks, Mr. Liu. So basically, I, you know, the, the Chinese system does seem to track the U.S. and the system, uh, at least in terms of many timeframes are similar. For example, uh, they have, there's a 45-day time limit to file suit once the uh, reference-listed drug company receives notice. Uh, there's a stay of approval of the generic drug for a time frame. Um, in China, of course, it's only nine months versus the 30 months that you get in the U.S., uh, and the successful generic challenger gets exclusivity uh, when they are the first to get approved as well. Uh, again, it's 12 months in China versus 180 days or six months in the U.S. Uh, still, there's no regulatory exclusivity for drugs in China. Um, a couple of key differences um, in the U.S. system, the U.S. ANDA system and this new Chinese system are, one, that you can file it at the patent office in China instead of just in the courts like in the U.S. Uh, the other is that there's very tight time frames. So a decision is going to be uh, issued within nine months in China, um, and we've seen actually decisions issue shorter than that. Of course, what that means for the parties is that there's a very quick time to decision means that you've got uh, much less time for discovery. You've got to have your case either already well developed before filing, or you've got to develop it very quickly after receiving uh, notice of the challenge. Uh, for example, this this could I think. I can see this impacting non-infringement cases in particular. Um, it's difficult to know if a generic will infringe your patent or not until they uh, give you notice about um, the challenge to your patents. Uh, also with China, this is compounded by the limited discovery that's available. So uh, although the generic company is required to give you detailed information about non-infringement, uh, if you need more information, that could be uh, a challenge to get. Um, one thing to know that this might apply to is, for example, testing patents. For example, you claim a uh, specific parameter or something about the product that needs testing to determine. Uh, this is something that obviously takes time to develop, particularly when you're not aware of it uh, before the filing. So if you do have patents that uh, cover your drug that you think might be useful against a generic, uh, a reference list to drug sponsor would be well served to have the testing uh, apparatus and experts lined up before they expect a challenge of this type. Uh, one thing that, that may make the testing issue easier is if, they, if um, the patentee could claim very specific methods so that it's simply an issue of plugging and playing, uh, just taking uh, the product if you're allowed to test it, that is, uh, and putting it through your uh, described process and your claim so that it's very clear answer and very quick to get. That's one way that might, you might get around that. Um, and again, of course, this is compounded as, as said before by the limited discovery in China, um, which uh, you'll have to uh, possibly get information for, convince the courts to get, get you additional information. Um, another few things, uh, Edmund, on the administrative side is that uh, the notice provisions like in the US uh, will go to certain individuals uh, and some of it will be based on information that is uh, filed with the government. Uh, so the branded patent owners would need to keep their contact information, including an email address, uh, up to date on the system. Uh, otherwise, they risk uh, either getting late notice or missing notice entirely, uh, if that's the way that uh, you are notified. Um, another thing for reference list to drug holders to be aware of is that uh, listing as many patents as possible is going to be uh, to your benefit. Uh, more, more patents that need to be challenged to get uh, a generic drug on the market is something that, um, that will benefit you down the road. Uh, the generic, of course, can challenge less than all patents that are listed, uh, which will benefit the, gener the generics if there is uh, a few patents that they could uh, avoid infringing or maybe declare invalid and be able to get approval to get on the market. Uh, another thing to be aware of, lastly, is uh, which patents can be listed. I think of most importance uh, relevant to the US system are that no crystal form patents can be listed. Uh, they, so crystal form patents cannot provide a branded pharmaceutical company with any exclusivity under this rubric in China. Uh, that means, of course, that if your crystal patent or your polymorph patent is the only one keeping your drug or keeping generic products off the market, giving you exclusivity, um, they would not be able to be used in this system. So the generic drug would not, uh, the generic drug approval would not be stayed for the nine months if your crystal form patent is the only one that's keeping, uh, that's protecting your, your market in China. Uh, so you should be aware that uh, if you do have a crystal form patent, uh, you, can, you cannot block a generic from approval, but you can of course uh, sue for infringement uh, after the product is marketed. Uh, so that's all I've got to say for now. Um, Jing, back to you.
Thank you so much. Uh, I can. I think we can continue with uh, Mr. Lu. Mm. 行，那呃，我继续介绍一下，就是因为那个下一张 PPT 吧，嗯，那个呃呃，截止目前啊，一共是我们统计的一共是有十一款上市的药物，呃，应该下一张，嗯，嗯哼，嗯，一共是有十一款药物，呃，上市的药物收到了四点一类的声明，现在在中国，然后另外呢，国家知识产权局一共是收到了五十九件这个呃行政裁决的请求，然后其中有三十九件是符合立案。要求的，呃，给予了立案，然后也是刚刚也介绍过，就是在上个月四月十五号，那么那个北京知识产权法院宣判了第一件这个涉及到这个呃药品链接的这个呃这个民事民事案件，然后在四月二十五号，国家知识产权局是审结了呃第一批这个涉及到药品专利链接的这个行政裁决案件，然后我们下面会分别对这两个案件呃进行一个介绍。Uh, so based on our tabulation to date, a total of 11 marketed drugs have received uh, compliant um, 4.1, meaning invalidity declarations. The uh, Chinese Patent Office has received 49 requests for administrative uh, adjudication as to, to the scope of production for relevant patent under the linkage system and has decided, meaning accepted um, 39 cases as meeting the acceptance um, criteria. And also, as um, briefly mentioned before, on April 15th um, this year, the uh, Beijing IP court issued the first batch, batch of decisions uh, under the early, early settlement mechanism of patent dispute under the linkage system. And uh, then on April 25th um, this year, um, CIPO also issued the first batches of its administrative decisions under the patent linkage system. Um, Let's just um, pause a little bit. I think there's a question. Let's address it. Uh, considering that is only substance. Uh, 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 so the next question is, uh, so 登记的专利类型有限，比如说这个就是化学物质的 patents， 然后这个，呃，应该是这个，呃，就是制剂，也就是混合物，还有就是这个医用的这个，呃，还有就是医用的专利，就只有这几种类型才可以被注册，所以啊、呃，应该是很容易就可以决定是否有侵权的现象。啊、uh, ，那么九个月应该是啊， uh, 可是足够的时间可以这个做出决定。嗯、um, ，然后他想问一下，他觉得是不是说在这个决定的过程中就不会有权利要求解释这种需要？呃，其实还是有的。呃，因因为那个药物组合物，呃，就是呃后面会介绍这两个案例里面，实际上他们都涉及到一个权利要求的呃解读问题。嗯、uh,。So the question, I will read the question first. Considering that it is only substance patent, uh, composition of matter patents, formulation, uh, formulation patents, and medical use patents, it should be rather easy to figure out uh, whether there are infringement. So nine months could be well enough. I assume there won't be an actual step of claim clock, um, construction by a court. And um, actually, um, there uh, could well be claim construction issues um, in a patent dispute under the new system, as we'll introduce later. Both of the cases um, uh, we'll discuss today, one is the decision issued by the Beijing IP court, uh, and the other issued by the Chinese Patent Office relates to some um, scoping issues uh, with regard to the patents. And uh, that's mostly because um, one type of patents that can be registered is uh, composition. 呃，行，那要不下一张 PPT 吧。嗯。呃，第一个在北京知识产权法院审结的那个呃呃涉及专利药品链接的案件是一个叫爱迪古化醇的呃药物，然后这个药物的专利权人是中外制药株式会社，然后这个被告是温州海鹤药业有限公司。So the first decision, um. Issued by the Beijing IP Court under the new system uh, relates to a drug called 
uh, all the costal self cup capsules and the patent T holding the relevant patent is True Guy Pharmaceutical Company Limited. And the defendant in that case is Wenzhou Haidorf Pharmaceutical Limited. Uh, next one. Uh, then, so there are actually um, three generic applicants who have applied for the marketing approval for a generic version, but only Haihe filed a type 4 declaration. Oh, and then PPT. Um. 因为这个案子正好是就是温州海赫是在那个二零二一年八月十六号做的四点二类声明那实际上在二零二一年的四月份和六月份另外有两家中国药企分别向这个国家知识产权局针对这个就是登记在这个就是就是针对这个相关的专
claim one of the asserted patent relates to a formulation or preparation. So uh, as you can see here, other than the API, there's, uh, there are all the other materials um, recited in the claims, um, such as lipids and um, antioxidant. There's also um, limitations related to the effects of the uh, other substance, such as antioxidant. And the um, difference um, in the non-API materials the reason why the court found that uh, the generic version doesn't fall within the scope of the patent protection. Okay,下面下一张PPT吧。呃，下一个介绍的案子是国家知识产权局在四月二十五号做出的关于一个叫呃盐酸氢好铜缓释片的这样的一个呃那个呃案件吧。然后这个案件的专利权人是。So um, the second case we'll um, briefly discuss today is the first decision issued by the patent um, patent Chinese um, patent office, and um, in that case, the dispute relates to a drug called uh, oxycodone hydro hydrochloride sustained release tablets. And uh, the applicant patentee requesting uh, confirmation that um, the generic version falling within the scope of the patent protection. The applicant is Purdue Pharmaceutical, and the requestee is um, Yinchang Human Well um, Pharmaceutical Company Limited. Purdue制药一共是在这个药品上设登记了三个专利。然后那个宜昌人服药业是针对这三个专利都提出了四类声明。so uh, as you can see here, Purdue Pharmaceutical listed um, three patents uh, as related to the branded version. And uh, as to each of the three patents, um, the uh, Yichang uh, human well, uh, the generic applicant filed a declaration for uh, related to each of the listed patents. 呃，下一张PPT吧。嗯，然后以下几张PPT分别展示的是这三个专利的呃权利要求。呃，你可以看到，就是第一个专利实际上要求保护的是呃这个这个药物的一个固体口服延长释放的药物剂型，其中除了包
So as you can see here, on September um, 9th, 2021, the generic applicant uh, Yi Chang Human Wang filed the four point, class 4.1 declaration or statements on the um, relevant drug, uh, oxycodone hydro hydrochloride sustained release tablets. And then um, just a few months later, April 25th, 2020, the Chinese Patent Office issued um, a uh, its administrative um, decision um, related to each of the three uh, asserted patents. And um, citing with the generic applicant again, uh, confirming that the generic version doesn't fall within the protection scope of these three um, asserted patents. This uh, 呃，五五二这个专利的这个审理的过程中，那个呃呃，仿制药企业还提出了说，就是原研药也没有呃达到这个呃权利要求，这个杂志专利权利要求里面所限定的这个呃纯度范围，所以他认为这个实际上是存在这个专利登记错误的。那他提出一个这样的抗辩理由之后，呃，合一组也对这个抗辩理由进行审查了，最后没有支持这个这个理由。So it's interesting to know that um, regarding one of the asserted patent, 552 patent, which is um, the um, patent related to impurity level, actually um, the uh, requestee, Yi Chang Human Well, uh, the generic, generic applicant also raises the issue that this patent is actually registered in air because even the branded version cannot meet the uh, limitation meaning the impurity level recited in the claim, um, the panel, um, the panel, the um, panel at the patent, Chinese patent office examined this uh, claim by the generic applicant, but didn't uphold it. And so, so far it looks like we've got some, you know, fairly narrow decisions, uh, mostly on non-infringement, though there was the invalidity issue considered and determined not to have enough evidence of invalidity there, um, or rather error in, in listing the patent to begin with, excuse me, not invalidity per se. So there's not a whole lot of guidance on invalidity yet and how the invalidity cases will uh, be considered. Uh, I do think it's interesting to note that the time frame for the decisions is similar to that um, for invalidity challenges at the Chinese Patent Office historically. Uh, all, of course, the benefit to the new patent challenge rubric is that you would get uh, a stay of approval of the generic drug um, for challenge under this system whereas you would not get a stay uh, for challenge of a by generic drug under the historic um, system. Uh, I think it's interesting that you know, both Chinese and foreign companies are participating in this. I think that speaks well to how um, companies are viewing this proceeding. Um, and the fact that the generic companies have really won a non-infringement so far, I, I don't think is necessarily um, indicative of how these proceedings will uh, occur in the future. It looks like the patents that we're aware of that have been challenged in this proceeding are mostly what we would call the low-hanging fruit, ones that uh, generic companies are adept at designing around like formulation patents, I think, as we have seen. Um, I do think it's also interesting that, um, that uh, actually, you know what, Jean, can we go to the, uh, the next slide? I believe that's our final summary slide. Okay, so again, I, you know, I do think it's interesting that so far this proceeding is only for small molecule drugs. Uh, there's, it's possible that there is a biological drug rubric in the works, uh, but it is yet to be implemented. So uh, right now we're only dealing with small molecule drugs. Um, and the, uh, the nine month period for the patent issue, office issue decision um, after acceptance of the case, again, it, you know, it, I think as one of our commentators noted, uh, it can be enough for certain types of patents, but if additional discovery is needed, it could be pretty quick. Um, so I would recommend that uh, all parties have their, their ducks in a row on, in terms of arguments for both validity or invalidity uh, and infringement or non-infringement uh, as well developed as possible before you expect a patent challenge. Uh, and then of course for non-infringement, when you learn of that, develop your infringement case if you're the patent owner uh, as quickly as possible, have your ducks aligned if there's any uh, additional discovery you need for that um, so that it's ready to go. Great. <coughs> 
Let us uh, conclude with some of the summaries of the key features of the Chinese system. And the first one is, as um, Scott mentioned, that um, actually the current Chinese system only uh, applies to chemical drugs, meaning small uh, molecule drugs, not biological large molecule drugs. Uh, 而且未来我们预估就是走行的裁决这个图径的话应该能保证在六到七个月之内就审结了而且未来我们预估就是走行的裁决这个图径的话应该能保证在六到七个月之内就能审结所以应该大部分的案件我们觉得都会在等待期之